Hey everyone, my name's Christy. Welcome to my corner. It is Floss Tube Friday and this is Floss Tube number four. So welcome to my new subscribers and welcome back to everyone who had already been subscribed. I appreciate you coming back. I feel like each week I say I kind of start my floss tubes the same way and I say um, I had a busy week, so not much time for stitching, but you know, next week I'll have more time and I'll like do more stuff and then it doesn't happen. Um, so I don't actually mean to lie to you, but I do every week, but this time I mean it <laughs> because I had two really big projects that were due this week. I had an article that was due on Monday and I had a big presentation last night. Um, and so those are done now. And my hope is that I can just like refocus on my teaching and have more time for stitching. So we'll see if that happens. With all that being said, I do have some whips and I have some old finished objects and I have a haul and I have plans. So I do have something to talk about, which is good. But first and very importantly, um, I got some happy stitch email this week from my friend Stitcher Trish and I will post a link to her channel below. Um, she sent me this really amazing project bag and it's big, right? It's too big so I can't see you. Um, but it's fully lined and it fits my eight inch hoop projects, which seems to be the size that I'm, that I really like moving towards. So this is fantastic. And it has a gorgeous little fob on it with a nice little bead that her husband made. And along with that, she also gave me a really beautiful needle minder um, that goes with my current whip. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So she gave me this beautiful needle minder that her husband also made. Um, and I'll talk about this whip in a moment, but anyway. If you're looking for a project bag that will fit like an entire project um, or needle minders or like scissor fobs, check out their Etsy shop. I'll post their Etsy shop below as well. Um, she's, she's good people and the work is really high quality. So I highly recommend them. And that brings me to my whip. So my first whip, as you saw, was um, this is my kind of, I've been working on it this week. It is the Lonely Mountain from the map that's in the front of um, J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit. And this is the really fancy, nice version that I bought for myself when I got into grad school. I was inspired by Leanne of Small Town Stitches. I'll link her channel below. Um, in her last floss tube, I think she was talking about wanting to, there was a cross stitch pattern of the map from Lord of the Rings. And I thought, like I could do that. Uh, and I love maps. Um, I've always loved maps. When I was younger, I used to read lots of fantasy and sci-fi novels all the time. And I would just flip back and forth from the map to the reading just so I could always picture in my mind where the characters were. And then as a medieval historian, I got really excited about medieval maps. And there are some awesome medieval maps, which I kind of want to stitch at some point, but that'll be a whole another big project. So I decided to stitch, I said to start with The Hobbit, which comes before Lord of the Rings. I was going to stitch the whole map, but it was a lot. And I'm like, well, why don't I just do the Lonely Mountain with Smog with the dragon? Um, it goes with the needle minder, which is awesome. And um, I'll start with that. I don't love it. Okay. I don't know why I don't love it, but I don't love it. The fabric is the linen that I coffee dyed, the ivory linen from that quarter shop that I coffee dyed like last week. And I love it. I love the fabric. The floss is a silk floss in sort of like a navy blue that I got from dying for cross stitch. And it's gorgeous. And I love this floss. And I'm doing this project in two strand split stitch. And, I'm gonna... and it's like my normal stitching. 
for some reason I don't love it. I think I'm going to pick this whole thing out and start over. I'm going to keep the fabric because the image is already, I've already transferred the image onto there and that took a lot of time. I think I might change the floss to something darker and in the dark brown family. I'll probably just pick a DMC because I think, I don't know that I have a dark brown, enough of a dark brown in, in another floss. So I think I'm just going to do DMC. DMC works really well for me and I'll use that. Um, and I'll save the blue silk for another project. I'm sure I can come up with something, right? So anyway, this is a little bit disappointing. I may also only use one strand and do a split stitch. I don't know. I'll see what I like. It just, there's just something about this that I just don't love. And that makes me kind of sad. And I want to make sure that I love this project because I love this book and and I love the tiny little smog at the top. Look at that tiny little dragon at the top. So cute. So I want to make sure that I love this piece. So that's my first whip. My second whip is also in this project bag because this project bag has so much room. Thank you, Trish, for this project bag. Um, so my second one is my Dance Macabre. And I finished a second little figure. Well, mostly finished a second figure. I had to stop because I ran out of floss. This is my Weeks Dye Works Onyx that I was using and I just ran out. So I need to order more, but I don't want to order it. I don't want to just order like a skein of floss from a company. So I'm going to wait until I need other things, which may be soon because I think I'm running out of another thing that I need. The other thing I'm having trouble with with this project is that the image is on um, Sulky Stick and Stitch. Um, keep it right here. It's called Fabrisolvi, but I think this is an old version and now it's called Stick and Stitch. And it's like a sticker stabilizer that you can print on. And I thought for this, because it's such a complicated image that I would print it on and then stitch over it, but it's kind of coming up in places and it's not sticking very well. And I don't know if that's because maybe I got an old batch or what but it's kind of causing me problems so I don't love this situation I don't love the situation but you know that's what I'm doing so I'm gonna keep on working on it and hopefully I will get more onyx and I will finish it and I will love it and you know when I take off the stabilizer I will love it we'll see we will see so those are the two things that are in my lovely new and roomy project bag. Look at all that room. So much room for activities. So much room. Thank you, Trish. Those are my first two whips. My third whip is a continuation of my King Harold. And all I have left on him are some outlines around the shield. I think uh, there are some arrows, like the one that's actually killing him, and I have to do the the lettering, and then I'm done. And then this can be sent off. Um, it can be finished in, an, in a hoop, so I'm going to finish it in one of these hoops here that I'm going to stain a dark brown, because that's what my friend asked for. And then he's ready to go. So that's exciting. But I never did talk about the flosses that I use on him. So... I thought I would just mention the flosses that I use because they're nice flosses and I want to sort of give shout outs to the companies that make these really excellent flosses. The floss that I love the most, I think, well, maybe not. The floss that I really love is this maroon floss here and that is the Gentle Art Mulberry, which is just like a really nice slightly variegated maroon to actually matches my outfit maroon to like a rust color it's really perfect for this project and I'm almost out of it and so I'm going to need to get more of this so this is why I might be just getting this and the onyx together so that's an option and then I use a lot of color and cotton because my mom got me a monthly subscription to color and cotton for Christmas this past year so I get like excellent 
happy mail every month with this floss in it. So that makes me really happy. The light parts. So this part of the shield here and then the arrows are going to be in color and cotton khaki. So it's just a very nice khaki color. The main parts of the shield right here are in Weeks Dye Works King Mackerel. Like the light blue, which is um, a lot of the outline and his leg and also all the letters are going to be in color and cotton King's blue light, which, you know, feels appropriate. So that's a beautiful kind of light blue, which I really like. The His sheath and some other of these sort of dark blues here, it's kind of like a very dark teal, is color and cotton sapphire, which is like a beautiful, beautiful color. I love this color. I kind of want to plan a project around this color. Oh, and then the final color is not on a happy little ring. Um, it's just a DMC gold there, and it is color 3828. So these are the colors that I'm using for this project. I don't know that, and that I'm married to any of them except for the mulberry. Yeah, so I'm not really married to any of them except the mulberry. In fact, I'm trying to find one, a different one than the DMC because it's very shiny and the original is not shiny at all. So that is um, my King Harold and the flosses that I'm using for my King Harold. And he just lives in this plastic, this plastic bag that my mom gave me, a plastic project bag. I think she got them off of Amazon. So that's my lips for this week. That's what I've been working on. I did not work on my penguin and fish at all. I just didn't have time. And um, there's a new embroidery of the month that I'm going to be working on, not this coming week, but next week. So I'll show you that when I have that taken care of. Um, but you can get that. I'll put the link to that below as well. You can get the new one, which is, oh, which is Halloween themed. It's so, oh man, it's so cute. It's so cute. I'm so excited. So that'll be really fun too in a couple weeks. They're really nice because they're kind of easy and I don't have to think about them. So they're just kind of relaxing. I can just do them and relax. Yeah, so I'm going to have to order some more of that mulberry, which I'm almost out of, because I have to start another King Harold for another medievalist friend of mine. Apparently Harold was really popular with my nerdy medievalist friends. So you will probably be seeing Harold and other parts of the Bayou Tapestry quite a lot. I'm really enjoying stitching that those pieces a lot. So that is fun, but I need to buy more mulberry because I'm married to that color in this project. It's perfect for this project. So I have no recently finished pieces. I didn't finish any pieces this week, but I do have some older finished pieces still to show you. And the Lonely Mountain made me think of my movie slash book themed pieces that I've done in the past. And so um, I don't have any to show you here. One of them is up on my wall and it's high and so I can't really access it very easily. So um, I'll show pictures. Um, the other ones I don't even have anymore. Um, I sold most of them to friends and um, community members and stuff like that. Um, but I'll show pictures and so you'll be able to see them all. The first one I have is from The Princess Bride and that's the one that I still own. It is a reference to the beginning of the movie when Princess Buttercup realizes that Wesley loves her and she asks him to like do all these things around the farm and he says as you wish and he and she realizes when he's handing her a picture that when he says as you wish he means I love you. I just think that's such a sweet scene so I have this piece here and it has as you wish and it has the picture and I really like it. So that's my first one. This other one here is um, from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. It's um, the Knights Who Say Knee. And if you've seen the movie, I hope you appreciate the work I put into that shrubbery, which is kind of a play on the 
the Knights Who Say Knee. I was thinking of doing like their helmet or something, but then I realized that I really just wanted a shrubbery. So that, that's what I did. So here are two other ones that I did that don't really go together at all, but the one on the left is from Star Wars and it says Han shot first and I wanted it to look like laser blasters, right? I think it, I think it turned out okay. I think it's cool. Uh, it's a reference to one of the early scenes of Star Wars, the first, well, Star Wars Episode Four, so the first Star Wars, where um, Han Solo is in the cantina and he shoots Greedo. And in like the remastered version that was done in the 2000s, they changed it so that Greedo shoots Han and Han shoots back in self-defense and kills Greedo. But in the original, Han shoots Greedo first. And so this is like a huge controversy in the Star Wars, I don't know, community in the early 2000s. And so I wanted to pick sides. I wanted to stake my claim, my side. I wanted to make sure that everyone knew where I stood on this controversy. And then the other one is a major part of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, which the third one just came out. I really want to see it. But anyway, it just says be excellent to each other. It's the image of them when they're sitting on top of their phone booth. And I did another version of this for another friend. So I had a friend who bought this version, this first version, who had never seen the movie. She had no idea <laughs> that it was from a movie. She just liked the sentiment. She just wanted people to be nicer to each other. And so she bought this. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And then I had a friend who saw it and she really loves the movie. And so she asked me to make her one. So I made her one too. Um, and so that's this one. And I actually like this one much better. I think obviously it was when I had been stitching longer. And so I had more practice and more skill. So anyway, those are my Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventures. And I think that's it with my movie themes. I had planned on doing more lines from movies, but you know, time, right? Like we just, I just want to do so many things and I just don't have the time to do all the things that I want to do. So those are the ones that are my movie inspired pieces. I do have some exciting news though. I donated this piece that is a sketch of the clock tower at my university to the Alumni Association for their annual auction to raise money for the Alumni Association. And it sold for $60. So I feel good about that. Um, I feel, you know, I, I donated it to them and I helped raise money. So that was exciting too. So that happened. I think that's it for my old whips and my old finished objects. Yeah. So time for my haul. I have a pretty good haul today, actually. I ordered a lot of stuff in the beginning of August that finally showed up. Some things came in that I had wanted. So I think first I'm going to start with the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I got, I really like linen, like I said, and when I was shopping for linen, let me take this out of the bag. And when I was shopping for linen from Fat Quarter Shop for my last haul that I did when I got all that linen two weeks ago, maybe one of the linens I really wanted was just like a natural linen. And they were out of stock. So I asked them, well, I put my email address in so they would email me when they came back in stock. And it came back in stock, so I ordered two yards of that. So that'll last me a really long time. But it's really nice. It's, it's a little, it's like, it's not modeled, but it's, it just looks very natural. And if I want to keep embroidering the Bayou Tapestry, I feel like I should have it on natural linen. And that makes me really happy. And then just for fun, because I love scissors. I got these super, super cute scissors. Aren't they adorable? I love them. I love these scissors. I have a little scissor collection. I don't know if you can see. No, you Oh, so it's basically right here, hiding behind the leaves. Um, so this will join my scissor collection. And I love them. So I got that. I got my favorite hoops. So these are my favorite hoops. What I do is I stitch in these hoops and then I mount in um, other wooden hoops. So these hoops are not super cheap, um, but they hold so well. So, and I, what I found is that I have been stitching more in eight inch hoops and I only had one good eight inch hoop. So these are, I 
can't remember the brand name, but I'll put the link below to them. And they are from Jessica Long Embroidery. Uh, like I said, I'll put the link below. And she has some really cute embroidery kits if you want to start embroidering. She has a lot of tutorials on her YouTube channel, which I'll put down below. And she just has good stuff. I really like her hoops. So I buy my nice hoops from her. So I got that. And then I got a floss haul. I started following Dying for Cross Stitch, like um, I mentioned with my Lonely Mountain. And I basically bought all of the floss that she dyed in August. So I got six silks. I got the dark blue. I got this sort of variegated pink, blue, green. I got a gorgeous purple. This looks bluer on my camera, but it is definitely a purple. I got a gold. There we go, that's better. I got a variegated, very autumnal, like a light autumnal um, of orange and kind of like a, well, like this color green. This also matches my outfit. And yellow, so like yellow, orange, and a, what is this, army, olive green. That's what I wanna say, olive green. And then I got this really beautiful kind of pinky red. It looks more pink on the screen. It is definitely a red, but it's like a pinky red. And then I got the navy blue. So that's the silk flosses that I got. And then I also got some cotton flosses and these have names. So I'm going to read off the names. I have desert night. It's sort of blues and lavenders and tans. So I got a teal and blue situation called Mariana, a green and violet called, there's no name on it, but it's green and violet. Another kind of green and violet, but this is like a lighter version of that last one. So I'm going to hold up both of those together. So they're actually very similar, except one is kind of more saturated than the other. Everything Pumpkin, which looks much more orange in the camera than it is in real life. It also matches my outfit, which is nice. Coastal is another blue, green, and gray, but very bright, very bright colors. Aztec, which is a really nice kind of golden hued variegated but not much variegation, kind of dark gold to lighter gold. That might actually work really well for Harold if I ever run out of that DMC. Good idea. And then finally, Impatience. There, which is a pinks and lavender grays and peaches. So those are my flosses. And I am expecting some more from her of dying to cross stitch cottons from her re-dye. And then I think I need to pick up those onyx and mulberry that I need to finish my projects. So that's it for my haul. Okay, done. I'm done with my haul. So finally, my plans for the week. I want to finish Harold and get him mounted and um, sent off. So I will show him finished next week. I am finishing Harold this week. I'm showing him finished next week and um, I'm going to mail him out. In fact, you may not even get the actual, you may not even see him live. You may just get a picture because I have other things to send out next week as well. So that's my kind of my main goal is to finish Harold. And I think when I mount him in the hoop, I'm going to film a how I hoop things video because I have three different methods of finishing embroideries in hoops that don't use glue. Um, I don't like using glue, and I'll talk about that when I, when I do that filming, but I think that it's time for me to mount. I have a couple other ones that need to be mounted too, so I may just do that and um, film that. So that'll be, you can keep an eye out for that in a couple weeks of my, my the three ways I finish my hoops. Oh, I do wanna start 
this needle felting kit from Woolery.com, and I'll post a link to this below. I've already watched the video. I've practiced like I showed you last week, and I think that this would be really fun to start this week because I have off on Monday for Labor Day. Um, we have a three-day weekend, and I'm taking off on Monday. Um, oh, because it's my anniversary. Um, so my fiance got us some, basically a paint date in a box. So we're going to like hang out and make paintings and stuff. And I'll show you that, but I'm also going to do other crafts. I'll have time to do other crafts. So I want to start on that project. Like I said, I think I'm going to start a new Herald. I'll at least have him sketched out for my other friend. So I'll do that. Oh, and I have an idea about those resin rings that I showed you last week that makes it much easier to deal with. So I want to play around with them this week as well. Yeah. So I'm never going to get all this stuff that I want to get started, started or done. This is a perpetual problem for me. I am constantly planning way more things than I can possibly do. So my, my whole, my whole idea is like, if you just like shoot for the stars, you'll land among the clouds. Right. And if you just shoot for doing all these things, maybe you'll get like a couple things done. So that's my hope. So we'll see what I get done this week and I'll show you all on Friday because I also want to have another baking video for Tuesday. Um, I want to make German cakes which are not actually cakes. They're more like biscuits. So I kind of want to do that this weekend too and film that for Tuesday. I don't know how much I'm getting done. <laughs> I have such big plans always. Anyway, I think that's it from me. Thank you all so much for watching if you got this far. If you want to see more videos about my embroidery and my experiments and my baking and history, and other crafts that I want to do, um, please subscribe. That would be super awesome. And with all that being said, please take care of yourselves and I hope you all have a good one.